Hey everybody, welcome to Fortunate Creations. I'm Kim, and this is a channel where we talk about everything to do with crafting. So from amigurumi to weaving, and anything in between, if you like crafting and being creative, stick around. I think you're gonna like it here. So today is a tutorial. They're interlocking double half double dishcloths. They've got an extra row of scrubby bumpies, and they're extra thick. So the yarn I'm using today is yarn that I found at uh, a Goodwill store. So you're going to have to probably find a different type of yarn um, because I don't know that um, you're gonna be able to find this. But you, any cotton yarn or scrubby yarn would work for this. Um, I suggest 100% cotton just because you're gonna be using it in the kitchen or with water or whatever. So. Um, Anything close to this, this is a machine washable, obviously it dries fast, and that's why I chose this one. Um, so I have two versions of this, the dish scrubby. I have the full size one and the half size one, and both of them are double. So um, I show you how to make this one first and then how to extend it and make this one next. So. Let's get everything we need. I used a five millimeter crochet hook, and I believe this is a four weight. Yeah, it's a four weight. Um, a thick three or a four weight. So yeah, get yourself together, or get your stuff together, and we will start right now. Okay, so what we're going to do is start with a slip knot, and then for the size I've chosen, we're going to chain 25. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Not too tight, not too loose, about like that. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Okay, you got your chain of 25. You're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna do a row of single crochet all the way back, just to give a nice base row. So we're gonna go second one from the hook and do a single crochet all the way back. One, First row is always tough. Two, right in there. Three, depending on the yarn you used, it might be a little tough to see the chains. And also, um, depending on how tight you did it, but we're just gonna go ahead and do a chain of, or a row of single crochets all the way back. Okay. And then after that comes the repeat and the fun row. This really is just a one row repeat and it gives you really nice texture in the yarn or in the finished project. So it curls up a little bit. We all know that. That's fine. All right. Now these I've actually been using in my sink since I found this yarn um, and a treasure hunt about, I don't know, maybe a month ago. Um, I made myself a, a three different size set of these dishcloths and I absolutely love them. So I'm thinking I'm making myself another set for my camper that way I have everything I need wherever I need my dishwashing cloths. So everything in my camper and my kitchen, as far as cloths, are now handmade and they all hang. Because I find it's so much easier to know where they are, first of all. And secondly, the, the dish cloths 
and the, the little scrubby cloths, when they hang from the faucet, they dry quicker. They dry fresher. It's not like they're gonna sit, you know what I mean? Sometimes they sit and get a little sour, so we don't want that. So I find that just that little extra step of the loop on the end really makes a big difference. Okay, so we're at the end. It's just a row of single crochet. You're going to chain one, turn your work, and we're ready to go. So this is the repeat of the whole thing. We're going to do a half double crochet back in the very first stitch. Okay, half double crochet in the very first stitch. And then here's the repeat for the rest of this row and every other row. We're going to start every single row with a half double. Now you're going to yarn over, go into the stitch you just worked, draw up a loop, that three on your hook. You're going to yarn over, go into the next one, make sure you get both of them, okay? Then you pull it up, you've got five on your hook. You're gonna yarn over and go through three, okay? Then you're gonna yarn over and go through the last three. And that is the fun stitch that gives you the texture you need. So again, you're going to yarn over, go right back into the stitch we were just in, pull it up, yarn over, go into the next one, pull it up, yarn over, go through three, yarn over, go through three. Again, yarn over, go into the stitch we just did, pull them up. Now, this is a trick here, depending on how, how tight you want your, your puffed stitches to be. You can pull them up nice and loose or you can pull them tight. That is totally your call. I do it a medium because I like a little bit of play in it. So we're gonna yarn over, go into the next one, and pull it up. Yarn over, go through three. And yarn over, go through three. Again, you can start to see the pattern. And when you're doing dishes, you want a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a grip there. So we'll do it again. Okay, yarn over, go into the stitch we just worked. Okay. Pull up a loop. Yarn over, go into the next one. Pull up a loop. Yarn over, go through three. Yarn over, go through three. And there we go. We're going to repeat this all the way to the end. Yarn over, go into the next one. So it's almost like a double half double. How's that? <laughs> so it's my interlocking double half double washcloth. I like that name. Now I'm going to use it. Interlocking double half double. Again, yarn over, same stitch we were just in, pull it up, yarn over, Next stitch, pull through all three just like you would for a half double, and then go ahead and pull through the last three for the second half double. And you can really see the texture is starting to, to show. It's really a great dishcloth. Like I said, I've been using it for about a month now since I found that yarn. You can use any other yarn as I explained in the beginning um, I don't think this yarn is actually made anymore. Um, so you can still look for Fleischmann's, but I'm not sure that that is still, uh, still there. But, you know, we have scrubby yarn and we have, this would work great with regular kitchen cotton is what I call it. You know, the yarn I'm talking about, the stuff that... It's a little bit rougher than regular cotton and you can use it perfect for dishcloths and stuff. So now it does get easier to handle as the cloth gets bigger. And I should have one of those little bowls to put that in, but I don't have one with me at the moment. So we'll just chase the yarn around the, de the desk. <laughs> All right, you're getting there. One more through here, through here. Here we go, another one, a 
another one and another one. And yarn over, go through here, back up, go through three, go through three. Here we go, keep going. Don't give up on me yet. Okay, so what we're gonna do is you repeat this row. Now I'll show you how to end it. And seriously, it's every single row is exactly the same. You're gonna start it the same way and end it the same way. And then once you get your cloth the size you want, double it. That's right, double it because I'm making this a double thick cloth and I'll show you why when I get to the end of this row because I did when I was first making this <coughs> I did a um, single single um, sided single panel let's put it that way and um, although it works very well it doesn't feel sturdy enough in my hand that I feel like if I'm really scrubbing with it, it might pull apart. But it, it hasn't. Full disclosure, it has not yet. But it feels like it. And I want something a little more substantial in my hand when I'm, you know, washing dishes or whatever. Um, these are great for those nonstick pans that they say you can just wipe out. Which, personally, I think is gross. You should always wash them, but... You know, they show, oh, you don't even need soap and water. Just wipe it out. But these are perfect for those because they they don't scratch. Yet they give you a little bit more muscle behind. And you can add soap. <laughs> so that's why I like it double. All right, we're coming to the end here. And we're actually going to work right to the end. Okay. Right up to the very last single crochet from the row before. Okay. And here we go. So, still working one. I got three. I've got two left and then the very end one. So, we're going to work this one and the next one normal. Okay, one more time. Into here. And then three and three. And you're gonna see we have this little thing on the end. So I'm just going to do a half double at the end. You're gonna wanna make it a little loose. Let me redo that one. Cause you don't wanna pull the end too tight, right? So make it a little bit loose, pull it up to match the others. And there you go. Chain one and turn. Now you can see the texture. I love it, I love it, love it. So this is going to make a really great dishcloth Let's show you how to start the row again. You're gonna half double in the very first stitch, and then you're going to yarn over like you're doing a half double in the same stitch. Pull it up, yarn over, pull it up, go through three. My linked half double double. <laughs> Is that what I called it? My linked half double double. And we're going to go through the whole thing. Now you keep doing this, like I said, until you get it to the point where it is the length you want. Okay? And I'm going to show you why I'm saying that. Because here's one I worked on last night. And we are going to put the bumpies around the edge. But see how thin it is. It will work. But if you fold it over... that's why we're doing the double it just feels better in your hand again there's my loop but so this is the single version of it and you can very well do that if you want to okay and you're just gonna keep going until it's the size you want and then come back and I'll show you the edging on the outside or get it 
So it's this size twice and then we'll fold it over. I will come back and I will show you what I mean when I get to that point. Okay, so I've decided we're gonna do two different parts to this video. So the first one, you know when you're doing dishes and you, ha you have those little scrubby pads, they're made out of steel wool, they got the soap in them, they're good for one use. Well, this is the perfect size for that. So I did five rows and I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to finish this up and have this size scrubby. And then we'll go, I'll do another one and we'll go to the, um, the full size. So what you wanna do is we're folding it in half. Now you're just going to single crochet it together, stitch for stitch, single crochet it together. So I'm actually going right back in single crochet we're going to do this all the way across and this is just to get it sealed together and then we're going to put the bumpies on it so that it is um, a real good scrubby so all the way across on this side I'm going actually under to give it a more pronounced seam. You see that right there? I'm actually going under it. So I pulled that last one out because I hadn't done it. Right underneath it, okay? That way you know your scrubby is sealed perfectly. Now, I seem to have crocheted myself into a corner. <laughs> um, so what you can do, all right, is go ahead and make yourself a little single crochet border here. Okay, so all I'm doing is I'm taking two of the stitches on the side and single crocheting them, okay? Ooh, slippery. You don't have to do every single stitch, but what you wanna do is make sure you get a good even line all the way across. You can see it's working out pretty good. And this is a couple reasons. You're gonna need it for the scrubbies, little bumpy scrubbies. Those are an official word too, by the way. Bumpy scrubbies on the outside. So I'm just pretty much putting, and it's a little hard because there's really not stitches you're going into. You're just kind of going into the sides of the stitches because you folded it over, right? You can see it's making a nice little square. Come on, work with me here, people. There we go. Okay, all the way around. Let me get to the corner. Now in the corner, just gonna keep going, okay? All the way around. If you wanna, my one corner looks a little round. If you wanna make it a more square corner, go ahead and put two single crochets in that corner, okay? And you can see how it squares it up. And you're gonna go back the other side. Again, this is where there's a an edge, so you can actually go stitch for stitch in these. Okay. Now, I'm just going to take that tail and tuck it inside <coughs> because I'm going to make my own handle on the side over there that's rounded. And this is also another chance to make a choice. You can So three out of four sides and leave one. Um, leave one so that you can slide your hand inside or you can um, put soap up in there. Okay, so here, here's the option. I'll tell you before you make your decision though, I have one 
that's made like this. And I always just use it like this. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and seal the whole thing up because um, I don't use it as a little glove. So I'm gonna go ahead and use it as a thicker pad. Sealing the whole thing right up. We're at the end here. Okay. So, again, your choice, your scrubby. You can be finished here and just leave it at that. Again, it's your kitchen. <laughs> So you can go ahead and figure that part out if you like, but I'm just gonna show you the whole process, how I'm doing it, and then um, you can make your decision from there. Okay, so we're back to the start, and you can see this is nice and thick. Love it. Love the little scrubbing. Now, what I wanted to do was add a little bit more on the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this corner with a slip stitch. And now we're right back at the beginning, okay? So what I'm going to do is chain one, go right back into the corner and put a half double. <clears throat> so keeping with the, the scrubby and the pattern, I'm gonna do little little baubles on each one and then just slip stitch there. So what you're doing is you've got a half double here on the corner and then you've got a three loop bobble. So, or puff, whatever we wanna call it. So you're gonna yarn over, go into the next one, pull up a loop, yarn over, go in, pull up a loop. And last time, yarn over, go in, pull up a loop. One, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven on there. Yarn over, go through all seven. And then in the next stitch, you're gonna slip stitch to seal it in, okay? Again, yarn over, go into the next one, pull up a loop, yarn over, go into the next, same one, pull up a loop, yarn over, same one, pull up a loop, go through all seven, slip stitch. Now you see we've got a little bit of extra scrubbing power on this edge. Okay, again, yarn over, go into the next, pull it up. Yarn over, go into the same, pull it up. Yarn over, go into the same, pull it up. Seven on your hook, yarn over, pull through all seven, slip stitch into the next one to seal it. One more time, yarn over, Go into the next stitch, pull it up, yarn over, same stitch, pull it up, yarn over, same stitch, pull it up, all through, all seven. And then we're going to slip stitch. So, to finish exactly as we started, we're gonna do it one more time. We're going to yarn over, go into this stitch right here, pull it up. Yarn over into the same stitch, pull it up. Yarn over into the same stitch, pull it up, and go through all seven. And you're going to slip stitch right into that corner. Okay, now we're gonna make the, the handle to hang it up. So you're gonna chain 20. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 and you can chant you can eyeball it and see why don't we we'll just do 10 so we're going to chain 10 okay depend i guess on how big your faucet is and then you go ahead slip stitch the end right back onto your work okay right there attach it right back onto your work and then i go ahead and do a single crochet Turn my work and just do another row of singles right back up that chain. Always do a double row, that way you're not stressing out the one row. Okay. Let's 
single all the way back around. You can see the handles already shaping up. One for one stitches in here. Okay. <clears throat> back in here. We're getting there. I had first said chain 20 because my other one, I, I have a longer loop on it. I hang it on the, the other faucet. So this one I'm going to actually hang on. I have a little soap dispenser on the side of the sink. So it doesn't need to be quite as long. It's a little tricky. Um, you get used to it but it is a little bit tricky trying to get back into this chain because you're trying to hold on to this. The chain is turning. It's a little wonky. There we go. And then right back into your piece. Okay. Now, again, this is totally up to you, but I like to make sure that um, it's secure. So I do another single crochet right back into it and then one more so you're actually you link it and then do two crochets to get back over to where it started two single crochets back to where it started and that is where you're finished you can snip that off get your handy dandy which one do I want your handy dandy sew it in needle. Hide it right down through here. However you like to hide it, that is no, no rhyme nor reason to that. As long as we're tucking it in. And I go back through this way. Ha ha, this way. Okay. Pull it back through here. Snip it off. And there is the miniature interlocking double half double little scrubby dishcloth. And I will show you at the end what the double sided big size looks like. Stay tuned for that. Okay, so I got it twice the size of the little one. And what we're going to do is pretty much exactly what we did with the little one. We're going to fold it in half. You can see it's toy, almost twice the size, okay? By the time we get the border on it, it will be twice the size. And we're going to go ahead and do exactly how we did the last one. And it's just stitch for stitch right into corner. Now, here we go. One for one, single crochet all the way across. And again, since these are the ends of the rows, there's really not a stitch count. But you know you did 10 rows, so try to do 10 stitches evenly spaced out on this end just so that it gives you the, the uniform look, you know? So you wanna get that. It's funny how the yarn squeaks. <laughs> so you get this all sealed. Like I said, I like to go down this side and even the folded side so that, um, you know, I have four distinct sides on the scrubby. And again, I'm going to tuck this tail right inside and hide it in there. One less tail to sew in. I don't know why sewing tails in annoys me so much, but it does. So I'm all about hiding them when I can. Okay, so remember at the corners. If you don't mind round corners, just go ahead and go around. If you want them a little square, 
Then go right into the corner. Okay. And put two single crochets right in the same stitch. And then here we are back to this side. One for one. Remember, however you want to do the border is up to you. I'm doing a single crochet all the way around all four sides. And then I'm going to go put the, uh, the little bumps on the one side. Give it a little extra scrubby power. <laughs> scrubby power, that sounds like a 1970s cartoon character. Scrubby power. <laughs> I know, I'm showing my age and I'm weird. It's fine. Um, two in the corner. Make it a little square. Now we're on the folded side. And again, we're working into the stitches themselves. So there is really no rhyme or reason. You're just trying to get through and make yourself a border on a row that's folded in half. So make it look as neat as possible. Give yourself a row of single crochet. Let's turn it in a little bit, that's fine. All right. I noticed with this yarn, you'll see some fray sticking up. When I was working with it, quite a few spots, they had it tied together in the skein itself. That's tougher than trying to introduce a new yarn into your pattern because when they tie them together, the ends are so small. So normally I would snip it off and redo my own end to give me ends long enough to stitch in, you know, sew in my ends. Always hide your tails, right? Tuck your tails. <laughs> I think I need a, a mug that says tuck your tails. <laughs> okay, so we're coming to the end of this. And again, you have the option of leaving the one end open. Um, you could always put one of those bottle brushes inside of there and do the inside of glasses with this if you wanted to do that. Um, slide your hand in, use it as a, you know, a mitt. But I, um, again, found that I have one like that and I don't really use it as a mitt. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close it up all the way around. Because I know the way I'm going to use it and I know that that's the way I use the one I have. Okay. Finishing this end up here. And then you have to decide which side do you want your bobbles on. Now, do you want to go back on this end and do them, or do you wanna go along the side? I think I'm gonna go along the side, but let me think once I get there and see what I think. See what it looks like when I get there. The more I think about it, I think I might want to do it on this end. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do it on this end. So what I'm going to do is single crochet right back into this, Okay, chain one and turn. Now, oh, I love this, nice and puffy. Again, you could leave it just like this. It's It would work great just like this, but I'm going to go ahead and half double here, and then I'm going to start the repeat, okay? We're gonna yarn over one, pull up a loop, yarn over two, pull up a loop, one, Woohoo! yarn over three, pull up a loop, go through all seven, and then you're going to slip stitch. And we're gonna create this row that you can use, you know, a little extra scrubby power. Scrubby power. <laughs> okay, and then slip stitch into the next. And a scrubby bobble into the next one, two, three, 
go through all seven loops, slip stitch, and we get again, yarn over, go in one, pull up a loop, go in two, go in three, all seven, and then here. It's gonna work out perfect. So we're gonna do a scrubby bobble here, two, three, Okay, slip stitch into this one, and then a scrubby bobble here, one, two, three, okay. Through all seven, gets a little tough at the end. And then we're just going to slip stitch into the corner. And since we're here, let's put the handle on this corner. So we're going to chain 10, three, oops, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Decide where you want to attach it. So I'm going to attach it right there. Slip stitch it on or single crochet, whichever you prefer. Okay. And then I give it one more for good measure, just to make sure it is attached on there good. So here we are, sorry, turning things around. So I slip stitch, I'm gonna chain one, and then I'm gonna go right back into it, do a single crochet, and now we're going to go right back up the chain, single crochet all the way back up the chain. to give the handle a little bit more width to it. Now this will slip right over your faucet. Oop, woo, bump my camera. Slip right over your faucet. Um, again, it great to do once you've used it, you hang it up there to dry. Um, you always know where it is, hang it up there so you always know where it is. I'm always looking for my sponges and my scrubbies and I don't know what I'm do, where they are, what I did with them. So I go ahead and now all the ones I make have handles so that I know right where they are when I need them. Okay, one more stitch here on the chain and then I go ahead, it's kind of like a backwards one, but I single crochet right into this space here kind of connect the sides. Make it even, there we go. Right into that and tie it off. Oh, sharp scissors would help, huh? All right, we're gonna tie it off. Net job's never done until your tail is tucked. So I'm gonna take this and hide it in here. Okay. And we're gonna tuck it in. However your process is for tucking it in, it works. Just make sure you get that tucked in all the way. And I usually go back through just so that you know it's in there really good. And again, snip it off and there you go. So that is a set now of two scrubbies. They almost look like milk jugs. <laughs> but a set of two scrubbies, two different sizes for you to hang up on your sink so you always know where they are. All right, so that was super simple, right? Took just under an hour, and now we have two very functional items we can put in our kitchen. So um, you'll always know where they are because they're hung right on the faucet. I hope you like this tutorial. Um, if you do, please give me a thumbs up, give me a subscribe, and share it. I thank you for your time. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.